Jeep just dropped an Easter egg bombshell. It's a fully electric Jeep. We're gonna take a look at that and see how, how real this is. And also General Motors has released a compact pickup truck for under $10,000, but there's a catch. There's definitely some kind of demand for a compact pickup truck in North America, and Ford seems to be addressing that with the Maverick, which was spotted recently in Southern California by TFL Now, but Ford hasn't even officially acknowledged that this vehicle exists, but they're shooting a commercial for it. So that is gonna be a front wheel drive vehicle. Now General Motors has released an ultra small compact pickup truck and it costs under $10,000, but there's a, a little bit of a catch. Let's talk about that. So this is the interior and you can see it is quite simple, nothing fancy. They've definitely taken out a lot of expensive stuff that you really don't need here to bring down the cost. Looks like we got cloth seats. We've even got a manual transmission and just a simple display in the center. But what's the catch? Here it is from the outside. This is the Wuling Zhengtu. So this is a collaboration. General Motors has a joint venture with a company in China called SAIC. They're based in Shanghai. And General Motors produces vehicles together with SAIC and they're releasing them under the brand called Wuling. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing this correctly. So you can see here, this is an ultra compact pickup truck and the cost is about 59,000 RMB. That's about a little over $9,000. And it also comes with a, they're not really calling it a crew cab, but a four door version for, I guess, four people. It starts at 63,000 RMB. That's about 9,700 bucks. So it's pretty inexpensive and it has a 1.5 liter engine it makes 99 horsepower, but here's sort of the kicker with this thing. It's got a very clever bed. So the sides of the bed fold down flat, which makes it very versatile for carrying, I guess, bigger, wider things, whatever that might be. And of course, because the sides fold down, the taillights need to go sort of in the rear bumper area. So you get this big, fairly flat area, which makes it pretty practical. You can see there, it's sort of got a use case here at I guess what is a flower market, probably in Shanghai, and you can see the sides of the bed fold down. So that's a pretty neat feature. Here's the Wuling, I guess, SAIC logo. I was actually in China about uh, a couple of years ago and it's interesting, didn't see this particular vehicle because this is brand new, but I did see a lot of SAIC branded vehicles. Now the wheels on it are quite small. I guess that contributes to the low cost and you can see it here in this, I guess you can call this a beauty shot of sorts. It's not exactly, it's not exactly what I would call a good looking pickup truck, but the the price is right. Now here's what's really interesting. Let's compare the length of the bed compared to the Chevy Colorado. So the Chevy Colorado has a bed that is 74.4 inches. This, the Zheng 2 has a bed of 78.7 inches. So it's actually longer than what you can get in the Chevy Colorado, which is kind of, that's kind of interesting. The overall length is pretty short. It's 201 inches. The wheelbase is 124 inches and just going back to the bed for a second, if you compare it to the Honda Ridgeline, the Honda Ridgeline is 63.6 inches. This is longer. Uh, the F-150, just for more reference, starts at 66 inches and goes up to about 96 inches. So this is a pretty small compact pickup truck. I think the odds of us getting it here are pretty much zero, but I know a lot of people would love to see a $10,000 pickup truck. I just don't think that General Motors is building it for the North American market. They obviously don't see a market for it. And I don't think they could actually bring it here for $10,000 considering all of the uh, safety requirements and all of the North American and, and European safety and other requirements as well. Let me know down in the comments what you think of the Wuling Gentoo. Jeep has just dropped this huge teaser. It's called the Jeep Magneto and it is a full battery electric powered Jeep. It's not powered by dinosaur juice, by diesel, by petrol, or anything like that. It is a fully electric Jeep. And it's got a pretty interesting trick up its sleeve as well. So Jeep says this is part of their Road Ahead initiative, and they're calling it very sustainable. They're calling it very stealthy. So you can creep up to the rocks that you're about to crawl over and, and crawl over them very, very quietly. Now the name Magneto got me thinking about something, it's on the tip of my tongue. I don't 
I don't quite know what it is. Yeah, I, I can't think of it. So this is going to be shown at Moab, Utah this weekend for Easter, along with a whole range of an, a bunch of other uh, concept Jeeps that they're unveiling. There's like seven or eight of them. Some of them are pretty cool. There's some retro stuff, but this is going to be there too. And this is sort of the most interesting one. I'm not quite sure why it has the 4xE badging on it here because this is the Magneto. But anyways, this has something called a custom aerial flux motor and it operates at up to 6,000 RPM. And it's a, I think it's a fairly compact motor is the way they're describing it. It makes very, very similar power to the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6. It makes 285 horsepower and 273 pound-feet of torque. And what I think they're really trying to do here is I think they're trying to emulate the driving experience of the V6 with the horsepower and torque. And in fact, they said that in their press release too, they say during moderate driving, the performance difference between the V6 and the Magneto's unique manual electric powertrain is negligible, except for near silent operation. There's only a couple of images, so I'm just gonna show this a B-roll they have from the Road Ahead initiative. And here's the thing about an electric motor, which makes them really unique, is that all the torque is available from zero RPM, from a dead stop, you've got all of the available torque. So it does gonna have, is gonna have a different torque curve, if you will, from the V6. Jeep says it should be able to go 0 to 60 in 6.8 seconds. That is quicker than the V6 power Jeep, which is somewhere around the mid sevens. So it has four battery packs in the vehicle, and what's up on screen right now is the Jeep 4xE. They don't have any diagrams of this Magneto, but four battery packs, total capacity of 70 kilowatt hours. It's an 800 volt system. And the batteries are lithium ion, and they're distributed around the Jeep so as to balance the weight across the four wheels. So they're saying one battery pack is midship where the fuel tank would be, another is mounted opposite the fuel tank location, a third sits on top of the e-motor mounted under the hood, and there's a fourth battery pack which would be used for where the rear storage compartment would normally be and where the muffler would be. And Jeep is known for their 30 inch water fording capacity and they want to retain that with this Magneto. So what they've done is they've taken the battery control module, the batteries themselves, and the interface box. All that stuff is going to be housed in waterproof containers housing, I guess, so that you don't mix water and electricity because I, I hear that isn't very good for batteries. There is also a separate 12 volt system for your heating and ventilation controls, your infotainment, lighting, auxiliary lighting, a winch, and so forth. And Jeep says you should be able to use that to power stuff at your campsite. And I think the whole message behind this is that it is just as capable as a regular Jeep. You can go to the same places that you would with a regular Jeep. And it has essentially the same or better drivability than a regular Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. But here's the super cool thing about it. This has a six-speed manual transmission. Now most EVs have no transmission at all. They just have the power going to the drive axle via a single speed drive. There's some vehicles like the Porsche Taycan and the Audi e-tron GT that do have multiple forward speeds and the advantage of that is obviously you can operate across a broader range of speeds. It's going to be more efficient because the motor doesn't have to operate at high RPM when you're cruising so that's going to make it a little bit more efficient and obviously with a transmission you can get extra torque for acceleration torque multiplication. So this electric motor in the Magneto it's pretty much a direct swap for the V6 and it has a manual transmission, a six-speed manual transmission, just like the V6 Jeep, and it has a clutch. And it's designed to operate very much like the V6. So if you can imagine with an electric motor, you might have the possibility of rev hang because it's gonna spin much more freely than a gas engine is going to. And so if you're shifting very quickly, they say they're gonna prevent rev hang by going into regen mode between shifts that's so gonna sort of bring the RPMs down. You're not gonna have the revs hanging. And let's say you're in your conventional V6, your regular Jeep, and you've stalled it on a, uh, on, a sleep, on a steep grade because you've picked too high a gear. So when you're in a Jeep and you're in four low, and let's say you are on this grade, you can start with the, without the clutch in low range. Basically you put it in the next gear down, and you turn the key. Now it's pretty, it can be pretty jerky because you don't necessarily have enough torque. Now with an electric motor, when you've got all the torque available at no RPM, you can select the appropriate gear, 
put it in gear, let out the clutch, and then just starting to just start pressing the accelerator and you're gonna be able to get over that obstacle very easily if you got all that torque available at super, basically no RPM. And uh, Jeeps have this super low crawl ratio, I think it's 84 to one if I recall correctly. So that would be a potential advantage over an ICE motor. Now I think this is a really cool looking concept. It has white and black paint. We have these sort of electric blue uh, roll bars here in the back. I'm sort of getting like early 80s vibes from this and I think it looks I think it looks pretty neat actually. Now what Jeep didn't tell us is what the range is going to be or perhaps more importantly how many hours of use you might get from a single charge. So the battery pack is 70 kilowatt hours. It's actually not that big and the Jeep is a fairly heavy vehicle. It weighs uh, conventional Rubicon weighs, I think in the range of 4,600 pounds, if I ca recall correctly. And so with battery packs, I expect this is going to be a little bit more hefty than that. And, you know, my guess is that with a battery pack of that size in a vehicle like the Jeep, we're going to be looking at a range of probably under 200 miles. And remember when you're going out off-roading, if you're at a trailhead, you're going to need to charge up. Now, a company like Rivian says that they're going to have chargers at trailheads. They're going to develop this network, and that's part of their strategy. Of course, Jeep hasn't really said anything like that, so this is you know, going to be a potential issue if you're driving 40 miles from your uh, charge point to the beginning of the trail, and let's say your range is 180 miles. Now it's really 140 miles. Now, how relevant is that? I don't really know because range isn't as important when you're going off-road, it's really, in my opinion, more about how many hours you're going to be out on the trail doing things, because you're not going to be going very far. It's about how much energy and electricity you're going to be using to do the things you want to do, to crawl over rocks, to go down trails and so forth. So we don't know how many hours this is going to last on a single charge. So these are all like pretty open, interesting questions right now. Uh, this concept does come with a two inch lift kit. It has rock sliders, 35 inch tires and a worn winch. Jeep hasn't said how much this is going to cost or even if this is really likely to come to fruition. My guess is that mm, this is probably going to remain in the concept uh, phase. I don't think this is really going to make it to become a production vehicle in the form that it is. Uh, the Jeep 4xe should be available in dealers pretty soon and that was uh, I guess a concept that they released a little while ago but it had more clues that we were going to get a real vehicle. Here there's less clues that that's going to happen. So in my opinion this is probably just going to remain a concept but let me know down below if this is something that you would consider. And by the way I've been reviewing a 2021 Charger Hellcat Red Eye. It's pretty awesome. I'm going to have a video up on that. Hopefully in the next couple days I'm still editing it, so stay tuned for that. My name is Eric. Please subscribe if you're new, and I will see you in the next video.